the, the main topic for this is uh, mentoring our youth uh, through art. And we have a unique opportunity to have these two brothers here because obviously mentoring and mentorship is something that you do and not necessarily something that you talk about. Uh, and, and these gentlemen do exactly that. So I'd like for them to introduce themselves and we can start all the way from Jay at the end if you like. Okay. Well, my name is Jamal Collins. I go by Jay Workman. That's my handle. I started an after school program. I started off working with the Boys and Girls Club as an art instructor. So that was just teaching the basics. That's painting, a little bit of ceramics, and drawing. But I saw they needed more than that. My background is in graphic design. So I uh, kicked off an idea of teaching them graphic design. They went forward. I resigned as an art instructor. I came back in as a consultant. I started at one location and I merged over into seven locations and then it just kind of grew from there. Um, so that's that for the most part I teach about 100 kids a month. I started teaching at the, uh, Richmond High School. They have something that's cool because it's a smaller district. It's called Techie Hub and they have like a coders program and they felt that it was a cool idea to bring me in because they teach uh, coding and I come in as a marketing graphic design element for uh, Richmond High School. Um, I also do some uh, big workshops at PNC Fairfax. Um, I teach during the day at Tri-C, Cinematography and Photography. My name is Mr. Soul. I am a visual art, a multidisciplinary visual artist. Um, by profession, I am a graphic artist. I specialize in brand identity, illustration, and in particular music package design. But I'm also a fine artist. I do uh, murals, uh, pen and ink, watercolors, acrylic, rocks, dirt, whatever it takes to create, <laughs> right? Um, I think my, my experience with the, the value in, in mentoring in art came from a member of my crew who's not here. He was here last week. Um, his name is Sano. And uh, he took myself and a few other artists under his wing and taught us you know, some of the principles of graffiti art. He taught us also the principles of how to monetize our talent. We were airbrushing t-shirts and jean jackets during that time frame. And um, they went on to open up a screen printing and design studio down in the arts craft building before anybody really knew what was going on down there. We're talking about like early 2000s, late, late, well no, 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 we're talking about mid 90s actually. Primarily, um, I'm always looking for my collective, the Cleveland Scribe Tribe, we're always looking for opportunities to use art as a vehicle for social justice and change, and we feel like mentoring the youth is one of those components, being able to teach them at an early age how to uh, become a business and how to look at design and art as a career and not to adopt the mentality that our parents teach us about the starving artists. So that's kind of the roles that we, we play. In, uh, um, I've had the opportunity to be a bridge in between the inner city and the design industry. I've gave keynote talks on design and social change at some of the biggest design conferences, Weapons of Mass Creation, Creative South. So it's all about exposure and exposing them to these events, exposing them to guys like you, and exposing people that's in the industry and into the game to these guys in the inner city. So most of these talks are kind of geared around professionals like, you know, older people who are already um, kind of in their career and getting this advice, but I'm trying to open up a path so they can, you know, not only just uh, buy my stuff like how cool I am type of thing, I, it's okay to do that, but I want to give people the opportunity to give back and to have these guys come and see guys like me on the stage and let them know that it's possible that you can pick up these tangible things that I'm giving you and be able to you know, uh, make, a, make a life for themselves. In May, I spoke to two fifth grade classes and two eighth grade classes over at the intergenerational school in, um, over on, off of Buckeye. And, um, St. Luke's. St. Luke's, yeah, over by St. Luke's. And two of the kids asked me if I knew him, right? <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's my brother. Oh, y'all related? No, 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 not my blood brother, <laughs> but my brother in art and design. 
And so at that moment, I knew that the work that he was doing was effective because a lot of these kids don't have connections to artists. They're, in, they're like we were. We grew up in our rooms, in our basements. Um, maybe we had a cool friend that we were around, but you know, a lot of these people, a lot of these children have the interest or we go in and stimulate it. I think, uh, one, oh, I'm gonna let you get it. So one of the things is that a lot of the kids, I, some of them I talk to aren't particularly artists. They still have iPhones. So I think it's real crucial that they still should be creating content um, around their interest in what they're doing. A lot of them, I talk about this a lot, uh, they're mostly consumers, that's the problem. They don't create anything. So even if they are into cheerleading, into being silly, so I connect with them, whether they into design, if they into you know, cooking or being a funny, if you're a class clown, then you need to be recording your jokes. So this is the type of thing that they should be wrapping their minds around because I really feel, I really feel strong about that. The days of just sending a resume into a black hole is gonna be done. People wanna see what you're about, they wanna put up your social networks and see if you're funny like you would say you are. The story I tell is that we are chosen, right? We have been chosen to be these people. Uh, he's one of the, 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 the few people outside of my crew or my collective, and it's 12 of us, probably about five strongly active, but coming home to Cleveland, <clears throat> I'm a doer, so I'm looking at who's doing. I've had a whole lot of conversations, people talking about we should do this, we should do that, and we gonna do this. And then a year go past, they didn't do that, right? Mm -hmm. And before I came home, I was told that I should meet him. And then he ended up in the studio of my best friend, who I uh, grew up with. You know, you should meet him. And then when we finally had a chance to meet, it was a continuation of that same energy. He had it the same way we had it, because I saw him on social media before I even knew who he was personally with all these kids in the projects. They smiling at in front of computers, doing graphics, and I thought that was brilliant. I want to say that the difficulty I have is mine is after school, so mine is three to seven. So the problem is, is that they've been in school all freaking day. Mm -hmm. So the last thing they want to do is come and sit down and do what Mr. Collins said. So uh, I understand that dynamic, so I have to be flexible, so they really have to be into it. And they're not getting graded, too. So a lot of them program to only do what they're getting graded for, what they're going to get reprimanded for if they don't do what they're supposed to do. So a lot of them, and, are, and this is an issue because they don't want to do no work outside of school. Once the school bell rings, they're done learning, they're done, they're done trying to take in information. So I'm trying to get them to understand that you should still be in that mode of getting this information. Like a lot of them only come in when I'm in there. They don't look at no Photoshop videos or they don't look at anything after they leave me type of thing. So it's still a lot of work that needs to be done. I can be followed on Instagram, Mr. Soul spelled out 216. Um, he is Jane Working. y'all to go spread the gospel that we just shared with y'all because we're putting in a lot of work and we're genuine about it and I am very very pleased that all of you took your, your time to come and hear us speak. Thank you. Job. I mean, that's a big change, isn't it? Man, that was just something I had to do. Be better when I start working day shifts. Night shifts interfere with my real work. Oh, man, is that all you want to do? I mean, go bombing trains at night and pushing a broom all day? Man, why are you getting on my case? I'm not getting on you, man. Hey. You see them? Their tags are little black letters on little white cards of paper. My tags running in Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens right now, in every borough, on every line. It's eight feet high and it's beautiful. But what about tomorrow? Tomorrow's a long way off, man. When I'm writing trains, or when you're mixing sounds, making people dance, that's everything. We're alive. 
The white one. Somebody made it an A train. So what does that mean? That means tonight after work, it's mine. 